so more than 0.1 millivolt so 0.1 millivolt is so 1 millivolt don't you remember so for example if you notice between two adjacent leads okay and there is a slurring or the notching morphology if you notice over there so if it is more than 0.1 millivolt that itself you'll be calling it as j point elevation in fact a lot of times you will be coming across patients who are not having symptomatic arrhythmias so they are the ones who tend to have this kind of thing similarly in the early repolarization syndrome it tends to apply for the patients who display early repolarization mostly in the inferior and or lateral leads okay where they have had a history of aborted cardiac arrest documented ventricular fibrillation or even polymorphic vt as well so what happens is if you will hopefully you will already recall what i said as the j point so j point is the junction of the qrs and st junction to call it as early repolarization it should not be like you know there's just one lead which is there and you say no so in a segment lead segment lead i mean is for example in the inferior leads otherwise lateral leads at least it should be present in two successive leads for example in the inferior leads like two three avf at least two of them should be present similarly for the lateral leads like one avl v4 v5 v6 at least two of them should be present okay and as i already said it uh, the repolarization value should be at least is 0.1 millivolt okay and the successive leads in fact so this is how it looks like so for example as i was telling you so this is the j point and this is how you call it as st elevation st segment elevation and this is the j wave so j wave is a small deflection which is coming almost like after the qrs wave in fact so this is the J point and the slurred J wave. And then malignant J wave pattern has already been some said like, you know, there are high risk features for the sudden cardiac death in the early repolarization pat patients, in fact. And the early repolarization in the inferior leads or global early pattern, in fact. And you may be able to notice the J wave amplitude almost more than 0.2 millivolts and terminal notching may be present so would anyone like to try this ecg to describe what do you notice what do you notice in this ecg Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. Is there any question you can ask? I asked this question that would anyone like to try to describe this ECG? No, no, no. And that's why then I paused for like five seconds. So, anyone would like to say, what do you notice in this ECG? There's already things written over here as well. You can read it out, in fact. What do you notice? Okay. Let me try to see. So, what do you, one of the first things, what do you notice is there is, it's a sinus rhythm, right? The axis is also normal. Then after that, what do you notice is, there's bradycardia. So, almost the heart rate is 42 beats per minute. And then what you notice is this repolarization and especially what is called as early repolarization. Why is it early repolarization? This is also the presence of the J wave, right? Which I showed to you maybe like 30 seconds before, right? 
So this is what yes. is the jeev. Yes. So why why are you not guys not able to say anything? Okay. Anyways, so jeev is the one which is coming over here, which is present in the form of slurred and notched wave. And in how many leads are they present? In fact, so they are present in almost all the leads. V1 to V6 and all the precordial leads as well. So, definitely this person is having early repolarization. So, even for this early repolarization syndrome as well, there is something called as a scoring system. Shanghai scoring system which is present. Over here, what tends to happen is, so the scoring is depending upon the history, the ECG features, the family history and then on the basis of that you may also include the genetic test results as well so on the basis of that of course we can give is it a high risk low risk or the medium risk person so so if you want to really do a risk stratification of these patients so you try to see from the lower risk to the higher risk in the sense so if someone is having only horizontal or descending ST segment, otherwise something like the increased J wave amplitude or otherwise even more widespread J wave distribution, they're slightly lower. However, if someone is having features like the short coupled VPBs, otherwise family history of sudden cardiac death as well, they are the ones who will be having a very high risk for the arrhythmias. So one of the other uh, problems which those patients can be having is something is called as the idiopathic ventricular fibrillation. So, how would you define ventricular fibrillation? How would you define such patients? So, for such patients, what do you notice is someone has already been revived. In fact, uh, a lot of times you may be able to record the rhythm as well and a lot of times what will happen is of course uh, among the etiologies you have already ruled out the common etiologies including that of the heart, the respiratory system, the metabolic and also the toxicological etiologies as well and that is the when, time when you will be calling it as idiopathic ventricular fibrillation. Most of these patients tend to have normal ECG and a uh, lot of times uh, a corrected QT interval will be, if you will calculate for such patients, they tend to be normal in fact. So the hallmark for such patients is like the, it is more of a typical short coupled PVC. And then, so for example, I'll try to give you an example. So what is happening is, this is the sinus rhythm of the ECG of the patient. And then over here, what tends to happen is, there's a short coupled PVC. Do you notice it over here, the first one? And then what is happening? What is this rhythm? I spoke... No, before that. That's a good guess at least. So you are reading the slides. Other than what was it, what I had said. VF is coming later on, okay? But before this, what is this? I already showed you an example as well. Torsats, right. Good. Why your voice is so low? You didn't have your breakfast today? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you are already sleeping, is it? Okay, never mind. So, so, so be confident, okay? So that's how we all learn. We make, do make some mistakes as well. And sometimes then we proceed, okay? Don't worry. Good good try, good try. So I had shown you some examples as well for that, right? So make it more interactive. If you try to make it more one way, you will also go to sleep. I will also go to sleep. Okay. So what are those other markers which is presented? Fragmented QRS. So how do you define fragmented QRS? Can anyone try So what happens is, due to the defective intramyocardial conduction delay, which is 
present secondary to the fibrosis or the scar tissue, the fragmented QRS tends to happen. And of course, the typical bundle branch blocks are not seen. So anyone would like to try what is happening in this ECG? Never be afraid of making mistakes, okay? So what is happening in this ECG? Okay, and? And what else? There are two spikes fragmented. Mm -hmm. That uh, is ST elevation. Okay. And? So at least I'm so happy that everyone is a little bit opening their mouth. So not everyone is asking. So what is happening is, first thing what do we notice is there's prolonged Q QRS, right? Then after that, one of the other things what do we notice is, over here there are two spikes over here. Although the heart rate is, uh, I won't call it as sinus bradycardia, but it's slightly on the lower side. And in fact, the J, J wave, so this is the J, J point is of course elevated with two spikes in fact. So what is called as the high takeoff. Isn't it? Similarly, even the QT interval seems to be pretty prolonged over here. So there are various ways in which you will be able to notice the fragmented QRS. So in the form of it could be a R dash R dash pattern. Those, these are those different patterns and there will be notching of the S wave and notching of the R or even the this. So a lot of times it may look a little bit similar but remember they all are not the same. They are very much in fact different. And different in the sense uh, for example even if you will try to look over here they all will tend to look the same. But they are not the same, right? So, so that's why I had said it is if you are trying to see a patient with, uh, you can use it as a effective screening and also prognostic tool. So, for example, you may come across such ECG changes in the patients with the tetralogy of phallet, otherwise channelopathies or even hereditary cardiomyopathies as well. Hereditary cardiomyopathies like the patients with 